Don't be normal. Why? Because normal is unhealthy. Normal is sick. Normal is being in pain. Normal is not liking yourself. Don't be normal. What does that look like? Exercise. Move more. Eat whole natural foods. Be weird. Weird is good. Normal is bad. I, I'm talking about this because... Uh, I like that message. That's the default. I like that the message. The default is poor health. <laughs> Somebody said that to me when I was, I think in like junior high. And I think, I don't remember what it was going on. And I, I think I actually made the comment as a kid, right? Like, I just want to be normal. Yeah. And then yeah. actually somebody like looked up the dictionary definition. Have you ever looked at the actual definition of it? Mm -mm. It's not like you would, and you hear it and you're like, oh, I don't actually want to be normal. Oh, I don't know that. What yeah, yeah, yeah. look just, it up. Look like it up. everybody else. Like you just yeah. blend in. Yeah, read, read, read what it is. And just, it just tell me like the definition of it. And it's like, it's no one had ever like read. There the, it is. Give it to me. Conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. None of that, Free, none of that makes me sad. Yeah, and I, so I think <laughs> that, and it really sent me on the trajectory of the opposite direction, because I, I think as a little kid, I said that to somebody, I wish I remember who it was, he was like, do you even know what normal is? Yeah. Well, it's just, and then they read it to me, and I'm like, oh, that's well, not me. How I'm not conforming, well, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Look, at, he, here's why I said what I said, because I find it interesting that uh, if you, let's say, eat healthy, You'll have a lot of friends and family that'll be like, God, that's like, that's so like, that's kind of weird. Or you work out regularly. Well, that's kind of extreme. Mm -hmm. Or you spend an hour and a half at the gym and people say that's extreme. But if you spend two hours scrolling social media, nobody says anything. Right. So what does this tell you? Well, this tells you that the, the vast majority of people have fallen into the default, which is poor health. And if you stand out by being healthy, you're not normal and people are going to call you out on it and not, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad that you're, in fact, if you're like everybody else, then you're probably doing something wrong right now. And that's just the truth. Again, look at the data. Most people are, are sick and unhealthy and mentally, physically, spiritually across the board. Most people are just not well. And so if you want to not be like that, you have to live in a way that's not yeah, the way be, that they be live. a maverick. Yeah, it's it's interesting because even then you look at societal standards and how that's evolved and changed over you know each decade. Like it, it's pretty substantial. Like what um, you see now in terms of like what people like would consider normal. Like I, I'm actually interested to to see like right now what somebody would consider that's a normal person. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100. percent It's uh, <laughs> even the the blood standards when you go to the doctor. <laughs> And they they will test you for nutrients and hormones stuff like that. If you ever look at those, the range is like really wild. And you're like, where does this range come from? And how can way down here be right. similar to way up here in terms of let's say I don't know testosterone or vitamin D or whatever? Yeah, it's like why not be more on the optimal side where you're feeling way better? Well, what they do is they take an Outside average. Outside of average, they take an average of right. everybody that's getting these tests. Yeah. yeah, and that becomes your that becomes normal. But if you if you recognize that the average person has poor health, well, you probably you probably don't want to be in the same range, right? You probably kind of want to be in a different range. That's why functional medicine practitioners, for example, use a different range. They're looking for what mm -hmm. they would consider to be optimal, not just you know what fits within what's considered normal. It's, it's interesting that why we want to fit in or be like others when one of the most attractive qualities that someone can have is to be unique and to be different. Yeah. Yet there's this draw to, there's a fear to that. I think what you really want is acceptance. Is, is, it, is that what it is? You think that's, that's a good it, point. Justin. It's, like, there's a fear to that. Like if you go back and you, you remember the, um, the number one fear is public speaking. Yes. Right? And, and it's because you, you don't want to be ostracized by the group, the tribe, the, you know, everybody else to look at you and, and, and push you aside and be cast out. Uh, and so uh, in terms of, of you being different and standing out and, and not kind of conforming and being uh, a part of what everybody else is doing, that kind of puts you in that position where it's like you could just be cast out. Yeah. So and, and that's it's very clear as to why um, it was a death sentence for most of human history. And yeah. it still is. Right. But if you're ostracized from your group, you're dead. Yep. You're not getting food. You're not getting shelter. If someone attacks, you're gone. You may get attacked by the group that ostracized you. Mm. So it's why it's that's why it's the number one fear is is the the risk of speaking and lots of people in public and lots of people not liking you. It feels so overwhelmingly scary because of what the potential ramifications of that used to be at least maybe mm -hmm. not so much today but what they used to be. 
So the you other thing too- in, You know what's interesting though, is that if you, so like let's, let's say public speaking or being different uh, or weird, if you own it and you're confident with it, whatever it is, even like the failure to be good at speaking, but owning it and being confident in it or it changes this, it, doesn't or it? this weird, yeah. you know, uh, uh, look that you have with it or a scar or any, if you, if you, if you rock it with confidence, right. Or a style that you're doing that nobody else is yeah. doing. Yeah. If you do it with confidence, it tends to attract a lot of people. If you do it in fear mm -hmm. or you do it in shame or you do it like in, I'm embarrassed, uh, and then it does tend to ostracize you. It's yeah. funny how the, the the same situation, the somebody either failing, looking different, looking weird, if they own it and yeah. they're confident about it, that I that is me, and I, I am terrible at speaking, or I am wearing these clothes because I don't give a fuck. Or if you, you have can literally the, flip it on its head, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah it's like a, it, like you really have a choice on what direction that that leads for your life is like either it's going to send down this mm -hmm. path of you know victimhood and feeling sorry for yourself and why do i look this way and why am i so terrible at this versus just like owning it accepting it and and saying that this is what makes me unique mm -hmm. yeah that's exactly totally. uh, kind of to the point what i was going to say which is uh, you just want to feel accepted you're more likely to be accepted <laughs> if you're confident with with how you are so like back to fitness if you're ex you're just getting started and you start working out and you're doing it on a regular basis and you start eating healthier and then you have friends and family that are like, God, you're so, that's so extreme. Like, what are you doing? Um, that's so weird, right? If you're not confident with it, like you could definitely fall back into old patterns or you'll only strengthen the fact that you are not doing great to the person who's saying that. Now, if you're confident with it, it doesn't bother you. Like, oh yeah, it is a little weird. I know most people don't get up in the morning to work out, but I really enjoy this. Um, and you're and you and you just do it anyway. You actually start to attract people in your direction. You start to get, and, and this is the, the whole point of this is, if we have enough people who are confident and secure with not being normal in the sense of being healthy, and the practices and behaviors that lead to good health, you'll attract more people to move in that direction. And you could potentially, we could potentially, make it normal. Yeah. How great would that be if Modeling. normal was good health, not poor health? Yeah. yeah. How uh, amazing would that be? Awesome. And th now. <clears throat> The, what's funny about this is another thing that got me thinking with this is that I trainers and coaches and gym owners, you'll hear sometimes say the following. In fact, this was said a lot when we used to manage gyms at 24 fitness that what are we doing today? We're, we're going to save and change lives, save and change lives. Right. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And sometimes people laugh at that. Like, come on, you're, you train people like they work out. What do you mean? Nobody would say that to a doctor or a surgeon who is, somebody goes into the hospital because they got shot or they had a heart attack or the, you know, they're in diabetic coma and the doctor saves their life. Oh, they definitely saved their life. But what would prevent them in many cases from getting to that place is with the chronic illness uh, examples I gave would be fitness and health, better practices. So it's like you drive off a cliff and you crash and you go to the hospital because you're injured and someone saves your life. What about the guy standing at the end of the road that says, hey, slow down. You're going to drive off the cliff. Go this way. That guy didn't save your life. Mm -hmm. So uh, people in our space who are doing this for genuine, authentic reasons, who are really helping people, you are saving lives. You're saving so many lives. You have no idea how many things you're potentially preventing for these people uh, from happening. It's yeah. crazy. I heard uh, a, a statistic the other day that was crazy. You guys know who Peter, Peter Atia is, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, he's a brilliant, brilliant yeah. guy. And he said, and I, and he said the following. And it's it's true. It's crazy because he put it in a, a amazing context. The difference between you and someone else having uh, diabetes so bad to the point where they lose digits, they lose fingers and limbs, or have severe cognitive impairment. The difference between you and them is a teaspoon of sugar in their blood. That's it. Really? A teaspoon of sugar in their blood wow. is the difference between you. And somebody who's losing fingers because they have such poor uh, ability to manage blood sugar. How crazy is that? That's now, he, he went on to make the case that the most effective, powerful thing you can do with that is to build muscle because muscle is a storage vessel for sugar. So it's like you have a bigger storage vessel, then you can take that sugar out of the blood and it gets stored in muscle. And plus, muscle is insulin, <coughs> insulin sensitive. 
Um, but how crazy of a statistic. Yeah, no, you got me my brain spinning right now. So what is the uh, what is the average person, average healthy person have a total of sugar in their blood? If it's you need to when you when you fast, you want to be below 90. Uh, essentially is the number below a hundred below 90 is what they'll say. No, I know. But from a, from a teaspoon perspective, no idea. yeah, that's no why idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I've never the, heard that before. Yeah. So it makes now me he go, knows his shit. So I'm not going to question it because yeah. that's what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so I have no doubt that it's accurate, right? right. but that's crazy. You know, just yeah. a teaspoon of, of, of sugar in your blood. Yeah. Yeah. That's so a crazy insane. perspective. With that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I know when you use that number, Doug, when they measure your blood sugar, where they, what's the, what is the unit? It's like 90 or a hundred, but what is it measuring? Is it, can you look it NLs? up? Yep. Look up blood Nanoliters. sugar readings and then see what it's like. Is it per, like what's, what are the, what are the NLs? Not nanoliters. Is that what it is? Uh, nanogram. Um, see what it says. Uh, I don't want to say anything that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Let me do that. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll just throw out random if, shit. If you, it, so we got millimoles per liter or milligrams per deciliter. Uh, milligrams per, de Okay. So I have no idea what that means exactly. Okay. So it says here a blood sugar level less than 140 is normal. A rate a, a, a reading of more than 200 after 2 hour, uh, after 2 hours means you have diabetes. Um I mean that's only that's a, so it would be 60 milligrams per deciliter, right? Is the difference between diabetes and what they say is normal? Although I, I think a little lower is probably I better. mean that's just such a small percentage. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah, and what would 60 milligrams per deciliter look like? Or what would even a hundred right milligrams per deciliter look like in the blood, and that's probably where he got. Yeah, his. fascinating. Was he on a podcast? When he, was he? In an it was. A, it was a clip on Instagram. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That I heard him say that. I'm so bummed that we rescheduled him. Right. So we we were we were scheduled to see him in Austin, Texas, before we made the decision to go out to uh, London. And so I was actually really looking forward to me to too. Yeah, because uh, so people have been talking about him. I actually didn't know about him until just a couple of years ago. Mm. I I hadn't heard of him or didn't know what he was doing. And somebody was I, I, they were actually challenging something. Where we're a little different is on our conversation around cardio. Yeah, I mean so he's pointing to good data. On it's, oh yeah, no, I, and the, it, it's one of those situations where like it happens to us many times when there's a really smart person that we we like that communicates something different than we do. The, when you get us in the same room and we start talking, we still totally align. The difference is like, this, I'll tell you right away. Uh, uh, scientists look at data and research. Right. Trainers and coaches look at data and research. And behavior. And how, it, yeah, yeah. It, how it's applied in the real world and with behaviors. So the data may show that this works better but we may know that training lots of people and working yeah. with people, like they're just not going to do that. Right. So let's make sure we communicate the thing that's going to be most effective. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's the big, uh, that's the big difference. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Anyway, today's program giveaway maps split. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours, subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale right now on the most powerful muscle building program. We offer maps anabolic advanced. Half off right now. First time we've ever put it on sale. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Along the lines of what we how we started this podcast though, about being different, so that you guys have to watch um, the new Jake Paul yeah, Untold. You, were you know, <clears throat> first of all, I love uh, it's probably one of my favorite series on Netflix. I think Netflix, I've talked about it before. I feel like they're kind of like the the 30 for 30 kind of the candy of or processed food version of streaming services. I think they just throw a lot of junk out there and yeah. people consume it. Um, every once in a while they have something that I think is pretty damn good. The untold series is like the 30, 30, not quite yeah, to that level. Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite put 30 uh, yeah. for 30 is like, that's the primo. Oh yeah. yeah like incredible, like interviews, uh, journalism background. interview. Well, yeah. I don't know how, what you would, how you would categorize that compare and comparing them. But I would say that Netflix's untold series of all these untold out. I mean, they did Caitlyn Jenner and they've done a bunch of other ones that were really, really good stories. And then the Jake Paul one popped up. And I, I thought it was fascinating that they were even telling a story about him. But, you know, shame on me. That's because I don't know. He's actually know. one of the highest paid athletes in the world. Bro, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> I, know. And I, I, know, you, I don't know a whole, a whole lot about his background. I so tell you what, you guys will gain respect for him. And it doesn't mean that I'm a huge fan of him. You like him as a person. Yeah, I like yeah. him as a person. So before everybody gets all freaking defensive and be like, oh, he's a douche. Okay, whatever. Okay. Part of that is the character that he's strategically built. So, I mean. That's oh, clear. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Like he like embraced being the heel. 
uh, early on mm-hmm. and totally, but, and, but when you find out about his, they have an interesting childhood and their, their, their father is in the interview. Um, also, you know, what we've been talking about for a long time about him coming after Dana White. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, the guy, there's a guy behind all that with him who was a part of the, the building of the UFC. Oh, and he has inside track on all their stuff like that. And he doesn't do interviews with anybody else. He did an interview on this Netflix series. Oh, wow. So he's been this behind the man scene for a really wow. long time. And this has been like a strategic plan uh, from the get, from the jump. Yeah, Jake, uh, Jake Paul. Uh, to disrupt the fight game. They're not going away. So remember when we were we talked, right? And I made the speculation that this is going to yeah. stand stick around. That was the plan well before I ever even said it or uh, thought it was to disrupt the the fight game. You know what? It's interesting that I'm realizing about them is that, and this is a smart strategy. One of the smartest strategies I think you can make is for you to put something out in a way to where people underestimate you constantly. Because if they underestimate you constantly, then you always surprise people and you can always come out on top. Versus like having these huge like overestimations, then you, you can only you can only disappoint people. And Jake Paul and his brother come across as douchey, not smart or whatever. But if you look at what they've done with their business, you know who else did this very well? Like the Kardashians. Kardashians come out. They're like, they're dumb. They're stupid. They're billionaires. Yeah. You don't become a billionaire if you're stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's just or by fact. luck. <laughs> I, actually, I was having this conversation with my, with my kid. I said, I said, if you gave a thousand, cause we were talking about billionaires and he's like, oh yeah, but you know, they started out with a million dollars loan and this and that. I said, <laughs> I said, if I gave 10,000 people $100 million, how many people, how many of them do you think could turn that into a billion? Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Zero. To go from 100 million to a billion, zero people out of 10,000 would be able to do it. That's how hard it is. Yeah. Um, and, and how rare. How rare. Yeah. It's easier to go from zero to 10 million. Yeah, but you know, and there's there's a bunch of people that are probably shaking their head right now thinking you're ridiculous, but anybody who's ever scaled anything <laughs> to some significant value understands the difficulty and the rarity of do you know how much just e- doing that. Do you know how easy it is to go from zero to a million and how <clears throat> hard it is to go from 100 million to 200 million or 300 million or yeah. a billion? Yeah. People don't realize that. It's actually, yeah. if you look at the statistics and the data, so those guys are, they're smart. They, and they play the whole like underestimate me. Mm-hmm. game really well so yeah no the, they come what, out of nowhere the, the business they built, you know at uh at 18 years old he bought a 7.5 million dollar mansion wow by 18 wow Dang. that's how much they were balling that already that, that, yeah that was at 18 i mean he's in his mid to late 20s now right or whatever i don't know where he is now was but, that all from youtube yeah wow well i mean yes and so they were like that so the word influencer came from them oh so they were the first kids to go Thanks viral. He tells a story. It's a really, <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool story. Not to spoiler alert, like share too much about the. Go watch it. It's worth it. Uh, but he talks about when they first started giving advertising money to people on like YouTube. They were like the first. And he goes, I remember I got paid five hundred dollars for some. I forgot what product it was to talk about with that. And he was like, Oh my god! And then somebody else called them, and he said he was on the phone with his dad, and he's like, Well, what, what do we want? What do we, just say, say five thousand. So he's like, yeah, that'll be $5,000. i am like, okay. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like blew their- should ask for more. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God, they're going to pay us $5,000 for that. Like it blew their mind That's that crazy. this thing, because they were all just on this mission to gain popularity through, you know, Vines and, yeah. and YouTube video clips and stuff like that just early on. And, you know, they were getting just a thousand video views and so that. And that was a huge deal. Wow. You know, then. it's another good series on, mm-hmm. I, did you start the cult series yet? No, I hate you. I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm watching no, it's it. like that's like so, built for me. That dude. was made for you. I'm on dude. episode three right now. Okay, so there's a series like How to Start a Cult. I think it's yeah. called. So what, what do they start with? Bro, like, who are the ones that the Charles cults? Manson? Okay. They talk oh, about beautiful. Heaven's Gate. They talk yeah. about oh, I forgot his name. I've watched all again. Jim Jones. I've watched Jim Jones. all these cult like every yeah. single documentary you think of, of every cult. Like this is all new for me. So. It's insane the power that people can have over others. Uh, Charles Manson. I mean, I knew that story, but then they go into more detail. Crazy fascinating how he took yeah. like middle class, normal kids, girls, like normal, yeah. and turned them into murderers. Wow. They actually yeah. went in and murdered for him mm-hmm. because of the control that he had developed over Did they them. get into his use of psychedelics? He did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's all- actually the tipping point of him like really, because yeah. he was doing he was doing a lot of other manipulative stuff yeah. that wasn't that crazy before. 
And then the psychedelics and stuff like that really took him over. Jim Jones story. Wow, because there's a too. book. Out. Also, Jim Jones, same thing. Psychedelics well, took know. him over the edge. Yeah, that's it. That was a crazy story, the Jim Jones one. Yeah. I didn't know the full oh, story. Yeah, I know the Jim Jones, so I knew yeah. he built Jonestown, <clears throat> yeah. took all of his followers there. Yeah. And then people couldn't escape mm -hmm. because he was like, so, okay. Nah. And then, and then uh, uh, I didn't know this. A, uh, a California congressperson flew there Ooh, yep. because people were writing letters to go check it out and everything and filmed cool. with the film crew and everything. Everybody was acting normal. Yeah, And then he got a little letter that said, please yeah. help us escape. Yes. He confronted Jim Jones and then some they people left. left on the way out. Jim Jones had his people shot him ma machine gun everybody yep. and killed the Congress person. Yep. I thought it was I didn't know poison Kool-Aid. No. Well, yeah. The, um, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Well that happened later, but yeah, th no. this, this was like when they started yes. to kind of like really peer into what they were doing down there. And then it was like this whole news uh, group, like crew that went with yeah. them to like kind of film everything. And then they left and then they literally opened fire on them Dude, as they were leaving. A congressperson. So yeah. the, the thing that I find interesting and you just touched on it was the psychedelic thing. So it almost seems like you've got, I mean, and by the way, the, the, the part that felt a little weird is like, I think I recommend the book, you know, how to win friends and influence people to like everybody. Like, and that was like, a cult leader. The, yeah. It's like a cult leader, like book. Like that is like <laughs> the book. You know, it's one of the top 100%. books. One of the top books rented in prison. Wow. Is yeah. how to win, how to win and influence people by yeah, yeah. what's his name? Yeah. Uh, Dale uh, Carnegie. Yeah. Dale Carnegie. Carnegie. Thank you. Well, you know why? Because but it, it's but, effective. You could use it. For yeah. Good right. Or bad. So sure. Okay. You can use it to win. You can wield it for good or bad. Right. So, uh, anyways, what the thing that the common thread that I thought I saw is like uh, these these guys gain all this this power and become great leaders, great as in not good people, but great as in like effective, and then the psychic the drugs come in, and then that's when they go crazy. And what I think is that knowing my experience with stuff like that is I think you become a little delusional on who you are, and I think they start drinking their own Kool Aid, believing. Their shit that they've been selling to people to manipulate th okay, them for years, so then they go over the deep end so and become guys, think they're a messiah and shit. Yeah, you guys know the the MK Ultra CIA yeah. connection to all that. Yeah. Do they get into that? No, of course they don't. No, yeah. There's, <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell me why, don't. Justin. Yeah, there's a book on it. It's called Chaos, and it kind of goes into that whole thing where like they um, were paying attention to to Manson, and I mean, I don't really know the whole background. I haven't read the book or anything, but I heard like there's a lot of like connections there of them being able to find him and like see how, you know, they, they actually like look and screen and find people that have that kind of charisma. And then, um, I, I'm pretty sure like he was part of the experiment. Oh, wow. interesting. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They definitely left well, that out. Well, so all these guys, all these cult leaders start out with, uh, being extremely narcissistic, <clears throat> like to the, to the, uh, you know, unhealthy degree, right? Because there's a level of narcissism that's healthy, but it goes in the extreme where they really believe that they're so special. Um, and then it gets amplified because then people start to buy their shit. And so then it just confirms, I am this chosen person. I am special. And then it just spirals out of control and mm -hmm. it turns into something absolutely crazy. That's where yeah. I think the, the drug part kicks in is it seemed like the timeline on all these crazies was like, they were, again, they were kind of leading, kind of manipulating. It was like whatever, but not doing anything crazy. And then all of a sudden they get introduced to drugs and psychedelics. And then all of a sudden start. There was this, this one crazy. dude, I forgot his name. I can't remember his name. I only saw half the episode, but he was, uh, he wanted to be a dancer and a model. He was born in Venezuela. Maybe Doug could look it up. It was on uh, How to Start a Cult, maybe episode three, uh, the guys from Venezuela. And he was a failed artist, a failed you know actor. He thought he was so good looking. So then he went into porn, failed at porn, which is like, how do you feel at porn? But anyway. <laughs> Failed at porn. Failed at porn. <laughs> then he started this oh, like damn it, Jimmy, it's the wrong hole. Jaime oh. Gomez. Jaime Gomez. Then he started this like <laughs> this like new age spiritual movement. Yeah. And it was like he had like actors and artists and whatever become a part of his cult. And then they built him this like amphitheater and they all had to do ballet and they all and as you're watching this, you're like, damn, dude, like at some point they completely lose like critical thinking. Yeah. Like I'm like, I'm watching this like, aren't you like this guy's making you all do ballet? Yeah. as part of his new age religion and yeah. you're all having to take care of him and massage him all day. Like at what point, isn't it weird? Even like the, uh, the hot yoga guy. Yeah, I was just thinking of him. That's yeah. exactly like him. I remember telling somebody about that. Cause they're ranting and raving about hot yoga and like trying to like, again, this is me like 
talking to parents and stuff and like gymnastics or whatever. And like, they, <laughs> they have no idea. Justin so goes, he just meets people. He goes into conspiracy theories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, man, it, man, it's hot today. It is. It's like that hot yoga guy. Well, that, dude, if you're going to sit there and try and convince me, like they have no idea about like even what me being on the show and like talking about yeah, fitness yeah. and all yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah. I'm not going to sit there and like, proselytize to them about yeah, yeah. like what they should do. Yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. so I'm sitting there trying to listen to his uh advice to me and to do hot yoga and all this. I'm like, you should really look into uh the, the guy that started this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's really insightful. You know, there's documentaries about it. Uh it's just funny. Like, but you, again, you in any like sort of group setting, you just kind of see how this like shapes, evolves, molds like some people that really take upon this this power position. And, you know, inevitably how that kind of leads into a lot of uh, um, sexual stuff, like abuse. <laughs> it's like, always like Dude, that. it's just like, especially if it's a male leader, obviously, yeah. it's just like, it's so crazy that uh, that this is like the the playbook and it's and it's repeated. So do, you think, do you think that they, they go into it like really wanting and seeking that? Or do you think over time they kind of drink their, their Kool-Aid? No. Like so it? what's happened, and I, this is a common theme in all of them, is they 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 believe to be special. Mm -hmm. Then they kind of get confirmed. Yeah. And then at yeah. some point they realize that the that the means that the that the means justify the ends, right? That's the right phrase, right, Doug? Means justify the ends. Mm -hmm. Where they'll get their most the ardent supporters. Means. Yeah, the ends yeah. justify the, the ends, excuse me, the ends justify the means. It. Sorry. I knew I said that wrong. They get their most ardent supporters to help them fake things because they're like, it's worth it because it's this cause that we have. So in other words, there was a guy who did the faith healing mm -hmm. and he did work for some reason on a couple people, which right. is probably just them getting excited, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then it didn't work on other people. So then he would get his mo most ardent supporters to come <laughs> into the would crowd fake it for him. and they'd come up and he'd tell them you have lung cancer and they'd be like, oh my God. And then he'd cure them and they'd cough up like a tumor, but it was like, they already the had it in their bone. mouth. They had a chicken bone. So they're they were playing along <laughs> because they all feel like they're a part, like, no, no, we got to do this to keep people on. Because we'll save other people. Yeah, like that yeah. guy, Jaime, whatever, he would he would press on someone's forehead and then they would see a light while meditating. He had a little flashlight in his fucking hand <laughs> that his assistant would hand him. Yeah. Dude, okay. <laughs> they would, I saw the light. It was real, you know? Yeah. And they were helping him to trick all these people. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. And, and at that th at that point, it's it's so interesting. You go all the way through history and you look at magicians and like it, it, the whole thing is is to be able to like uh present this this somewhat mysterious like I can't explain it kind of a phenomenon. So then you just like you get that hook and then and then it's like this is this is power now in your pocket. And and you realize how you can like steer and manipulate people uh, just based off of like whether it's a trickery or whether it's like charisma or wh like whatever it is, like you're going to find that sort of button. And, and it's just so I interesting for me to see how groups of people can just be swayed and manipulated. Oh, so, I, have you guys ever been in person and like experienced something like that? Like really, hypnotism and all anything that? like that where you see like the whole group just get bought in like weird shit like yeah. that. I mean, I, I grew up going to, I, I mean, think, there were some churches you said that. Yeah. Thing, right? I, yeah. I mean, we went to like, I don't know, eight, nine different denominations as a kid, right? And my parents like bouncing from one to the next. And we we were at this this uh, uh, charismatic church for, which is like a Pentecostal type of church, which we've also done. And um, I remember being a kid and like, I saw, you know, what they call slain in the spirit where they throw like this purple towel over their head and then push them and they fall over and start like shaking convulsions. People would start speaking in tongues and someone on the other side of the church would translate what they were saying mm -hmm. and you would see it all. <laughs> it, it was wild. It was, so it, it's just bro, weird group think. And, and it was like I experienced that one time. Like we were a part of this church for like two years of my yeah. life. And so, and now, now that, what were you thinking the whole time? I knew it was like, here's, that's what's so crazy. When I was that little, like I knew better. I mean, I watched it influence my parents. Mm -hmm. my, 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 I heard my mom speak in tongues like like six months later. Like, where did you, well, you think you have the gift now too? Yeah. Like, come on, get out of here with that. It was wow. so obvious to me that it was bullshit. And yeah. when you see it first, I mean, obviously that's what tainted and, and disrupted my relationship with God and religion and everything like that was seeing that as a mm -hmm. kid and being like, same. Yeah, this is crazy. Like you guys you know, are crazy. You know what's sad is that uh, when it comes to miraculous type things, um, they happen every day. It's just we uh, we choose to ignore them or not acknowledge them. Like when you become a parent and you have children, and everybody takes it for granted because they, you know whatever. There's 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 a there's a miracle. There's miraculous things that happen. Like the connection you have for your kid 
Like if you really think about it, like what is that coming from? This is insane. Like this isn't, this is stronger than anything I've ever could ever potentially comprehend. Like that's a miracle that people are looking for the weird, radical, you know, crazy shit. Yeah. Or they want to believe that they can harness it themselves, yeah. right? There's yeah. this narcissistic drive to, you know, you know, think that you were one of the chosen ones in, in, a, in, a, in a, another way, even though my mom or my family wasn't trying to get up there and be the pastors, like there's a part of them that got caught up wanted to be so be a part of it so much that now all of a sudden they're doing it. But I, know. I mean, I think back and like, I, as a kid, you're scared and confused. You don't know what's going on yeah. as an adult. I think back and I'm like, Oh my God, how hilarious is that? That this person like starts speaking like I, this I went, out of nowhere than someone I, over here translates. I actually like, did experience totally. this once. I did. I went years ago, uh, years ago, this is when I was an atheist, we went to his church um, like show and it was a, it was like a before Easter or something like that. And it was for all families. It was a big ass theater. Okay. I'm not going to say too much. It's, it's around here. Big ass theater. And it was a show to show the passions of Christ when he gets beat and whipped and whatever. Yeah. Now remember, this is like all family, like little kids, everybody. Yeah. It was the most gory, violent thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Really? Like, yeah, bro, he's getting whipped and with the cat o' nine tails and blood and his skin is, I mean, it looked like real, like they spent a lot wow. of money. Like skin is tearing off his flesh and he's getting beaten. And there's little kids there the, watching. The Mel Gibson and version. And my kids were there. And I look over at my kids and they're like, like, what are we watching? And I remember I covered their eyes Yeah. and we left and I got in a huge argument with the people that brought us. I'm like, what makes you think this is okay to take a little kid to walk? <laughs> just because, but it really happened. So did the Holocaust. So did a lot of shit. Yeah, yeah. This is inappropriate. I said, the only reason why this gets a pass is because it's been cloaked in under. Oh, this. God. Talk about like, a, wow. I was like, so mad. Talk about like, really co confirming your atheism at that point, wow. right? It did. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. It did. It pushed wow. me in the opposite in, in, oh, in that sure, direction. I'm so sure strong, it did. I'm sure you know? it did. It would do the same thing. Oh, uh, it's me crazy. Too. I know. I, I, I got to ask you a question, Justin, be honest. Yeah. Is part of the reason why you're so interested in cult leaders and stuff? in like their methods. Is it because of uh, Adam and I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm always keeping you guys in check. <laughs> I, I, you I'll, have a little bit of the gift. On the, along <laughs> those lines, I want to know at what point in our relationship, because we go so far back, did I yeah. finally, did I pass the test, right? Because yeah. uh, do you remember? Was there a moment? Because Justin is oh, a like, harsh, oh, he's, he's on the, he's, he's on a the, harsh critic. I'm he very is, yeah. skeptical. Yeah, he just people. barely started liking Sal. We're on year it eight. Took, it, took, <laughs> it took me seven and a half years to get him to like me. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't very long. I mean, it was probably a year, you know, like I just kind of wow. <laughs> wow. like waited a out. Year? Yeah, like I worked for you for a year, Make bro. Make sure that like, yeah, you're us. on point, you know. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, that's bullshit. the thing. I'm always reading people. That's what people don't understand. Like maybe I don't say a lot, but I'm reading, you know, and I understand like that's true. Uh, what you're doing, like how you deal with people. I watch you uh, and <laughs> – I, that's true. I mean, like, I don't say a lot, but I'm I'm, I'm very observant and I'm listening. Uh, and so it's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that is. I think too because of our backgrounds and like being in a church setting and like all these things. And like, I had nothing better to do, and so I was just really interested in people. And then I would look and see like who was on stage, you know, what kind of music they're playing, like how people were reacting to it, like throwing their hands up, like. And I was always like very interested in like, why, like, why is that affecting them? And then, uh, I would see that same sort of like delivery, uh, from somebody else, like a politician, or I'd see that same delivery from the teacher. Mm. Uh, and, and so I was just kind of like connecting dots with that. And I just, I don't know why I just have always been really interested in that. And like, um, too, like how people perceive me, you know, um, and, and I liked being very, um, I guess, uh, more of like wallpaper, if you will. Like unassuming. sometimes, yeah, very unassuming, like very much like, ah, he, you know, so they could just be themselves in front of me. Yeah. And so that way I'd know who you are. Oh, you know? that's yeah. neat. I think, I think the, the, the <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> wow. I mean, we're, we're, we're similar in that area, right? Mm -hmm. Like I love to observe people. And, and I think the true test for me is that when the, the first opportunity that arises for them to, do something that I know would even be hard for me to like pass on, but they choose to do the right thing or the selfless yeah, thing. Yes. Right. That's always like the, the, yeah. the thing for me. It's like, I'm attracted to pre people that has, have that charisma and have that leadership, those leadership qualities. And it's, I'm observing, I'm watching Then a moment will always come 
where yeah, what kind of choice are they gonna make right yeah, now? Yeah, 100 percent Right. And 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 I know like, ooh, that would be hard. I know. You know. Part of me, I would be tempted to want to do that or what that. And I and so I know that's like one of those moments. 100 percent And then what will tip them over into somebody I really like and respect is like they take the harder choice. Yeah. They what? choose the harder path. Yep. Because it's the right path, it's the selfless path, mm-hmm. and it's like, ooh, okay, that person has character. somebody who turns down money to do the right thing. That's a big one for me. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, if somebody speaks poorly about other people, ooh, yeah, when they're not me. around. Yes. yes. Yeah. So if I if someone's talking and gossiping about someone else to me, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, then I know you're going to do that about me. Yeah, you're right. Right. Or, but me. on the flip side, you know, this is a great character. This is a great uh, when I see someone has good character where they don't want to gossip. They'll be like, yeah. well, you know, they're not here to defend themselves or, you know, I used to work for this person, so I I, I don't necessarily want to say certain things because I respect them. Yeah. Like when someone says that to me, I'm like, okay, that's Or they, de- they defend someone who you mutually don't like. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? So let's say yes. we both agree that we don't want to say them, but then they still come to the defense. Well, you know, maybe that we we don't know what he went through yep. that day yep. or we misinterpreted and yep. his, his real meaning. Like I like to give people the yep. benefit. And so if you have that character too, yep. where you- you have somebody you're with, you mutually dislike somebody else, but then you have the type of character where you'll still stand up for even someone you don't like. Totally. Right? Yeah. No, uh, full disclosure, Justin's my bar- my grounding barometer for sure. 100%. 100%. Well, I'm not, I mean, he's too, you, I, you're I, the most accurate. Hands yeah. Down. Well, hands down. I have to admit too, I'm attracted to like charisma, right? Just like anybody else. And so it's like, I, and I think it's really just a self check for me of like, you know, well, you know, what's their character, you know? And like, can I, can I like allow myself to be like drawn to that person or not? You know? Cause it's like, it's, it's a very powerful thing. Like some people are really good, really good with their delivery and their articulation. And, and then you see everybody around them just like mesmerized, you know? And I just, uh, to me, it's, it's, I, I try not to get mesmerized, but then I understand like, I'm like, oh, uh, there's a, there's a pull there. And like, why is that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So here's, here's a test of gr- your, how your level of self-awareness now, if you know that about yourself, well, I mean, we all agree that, that this is a strength. I'm a firm believer in your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Yeah. And so where does this bite you in the ass because of, of like, you have this ability uh-huh. and you're really good at it. Uh, where does it hold you back sometimes? Ooh. Yeah, I guess um, not speaking my mind uh, mm. right away. I think that's one thing is like I hold on to uh, uh, opinions and thoughts, mm. which is taking me a long time to develop opinions. I'll be honest. Like, yeah. I haven't been able to articulate and express myself for years. And, and it's only now like through the podcast that's really bringing it out. But uh, I had a lot to say that I didn't say. Mm. And uh, that's been like a real Achilles heel for me. Uh, because then I don't get what I want. Is that why you're angry all the time? (laughs) 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 That's good self-awareness, right? Like it's it's easy for us, like to know and point out the things that, like, oh, yeah, I know I'm good at that. Everyone's told me I'm good at that. It's served me. Hey, speaking of Justin, anger and all that. Can I bring up? Can I talk about? (laughs) We're using that for commercial. (laughs) No, no. Yes. Can I talk about it? Uh, I don't care. It was funny, dude. So (laughs) can I talk about it? Stupid, but yeah. Okay. Here's why I want to talk about it because of the way that. I guess we support each other. It's kind of a guy thing, yeah. but it's hilarious to me. So just, just there was a, a Viore <laughs> commercial that's out yeah. and it's Justin talking about, you know, the, the shirts he likes from there or whatever. And some yeah. douchebag commented underneath yeah. something like, uh, well, it fits him because, or it fits me because I work out unlike that guy, like talking shit. Yeah. yeah. So Justin sends us a screenshot of, he's like this asshole or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So now, you know, Normally, when you support someone, you say things like, no, you look good, man. You fit, whatever. <laughs> Dude, you're a strong guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're a buff guy. Don't <laughs> worry about this. What did I say? Yeah. Man, fat people are so sensitive. <laughs> 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 and he was so happy I said that. Oh, I was dying, I dude. Know, I was dude. like, yeah, it's stupid. Because if I did the opposite, you would have been really upset. If I was like, it's all right, Justin. You're fine. You wouldn't believe it's it. It's so off. funny. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the irony, though? It's always like when you're in a bad mood, like you have like things going on that you're like, oh, there's friction. Like I'm just just sitting there kind of stewing over like other stuff and then you know that pops up it's like one comment and it's just like literally like talking shit it's so true though like on the heels of the other conversation we had people would never say that in the real world would, that fool yeah. would never say it to my face nobody yeah. would say that never to you. dude like <laughs> no. well dude, we're, we're also slap now, that right out of your I mean, face <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a part there was a time in this journey of like building this thing that I actually thought man are we gonna get so lucky that 
we built this big thing and it like, and we don't really get a lot of hate. Like, is that pot? Like everybody else I know that it's like huge. Like they have almost as much hate as they have yeah. love. Yeah, like equal parts. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and, and the confirmation of that is like watching the Jake Paul thing. And the, yeah. I mean, boy, they're hated as much as their love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we get almost we, no hate. We don't. No. And it's, and it's really yeah. more recent than, than I, I have in a long time. And I just think that's it's because, still so tiny. It is. It's in, so tiny. I in, can remember, compared, which is why I always like when those moments happen, I try and like calm the fuck down. Like it's right. inevitable. You know what I'm saying? You're reaching millions of, of people. Like you're going to, you're not going to, they're not all going to like you. The likelihood of you. I mean, think about it, I, the biggest perspective I ever had was when I was in that arena when we were first coming up. And I remember we had just seen the stat. This was back when we were only getting like 60,000 downloads an episode, which was like a huge milestone, obviously back then. And I was like, dude, that is like two of these basketball arenas. Like all in here, the likelihood that all of those people are listening to me and all of them like me, like no, yeah. it's so impossible. not likely. Yeah. No, it's impossible, right? Yeah. There's got to be the a lots of them in your and, favor. And so you know, and people are loud and when that would never say something to you in person. They're gonna they're gonna say shit online. So it's like uh, the Speaking inevitable. Speaking of which, yeah. uh, interesting, right? We put up that clip yesterday. It was a clip from our episode, the one about going to war. Mm -hmm. And how Ooh, fitness is being boy. demonized and all that. And it's flying, right? It's it's definitely striking a nerve. What's weird is the comments underneath it, uh, all overwhelmingly positive. There are a few negative comments. All and all the negative comments from guys, dudes, from yeah. guys. Isn't that depressing? It's sad because fitness, like good health, is being attacked. Yeah. Men in particular are being attacked with this message yeah. because it's it's about being toxic masculinity. It's about you know uh, you know muscles are douchey, strength is whatever. Men need to be, and it's funny that that there was like a few guys on there that were giving us a little negativity or whatever. Don't go political. It's like stop political. They stepped into our space. They started demonizing fitness. That's when we speak yeah, up. We're trying to point out that like this is wrong. Like this is a wrong message. This is not something that people need to hear or receive. And no. so it's like we're going to say something about yeah, it. But and that's but, not out of fear. And I, somebody's made a comment about uh, you know paying attention, all these scenes and being in fear. Not in fear. It's confronting it. Yes. There's you have to confront it, otherwise it persists with better information. With better information, yeah, right. and the, and and That's the what free speech the, is about. But all the women, female uh, uh, people, commenting overwhelmingly positive. And I thought about that. I said, this is interesting because the clip itself is almost catering more or aimed more towards men Not on accident, but it kind of is, right? Yeah, you have all these female commenters who are hyper positive, and a few guys that weren't. I'm like, why is that? That's kind of weird, interesting thing. And then I realized. I think women are super really sick and tired of weak men. Yeah. I do. I don't blame them. I think women that. are the ones that are sitting back going, okay, this is this is not cool. That's not the kind of guy I want. I don't want my sons to grow it's up this definitely way. Definitely not attractive. No. And they were they were the ones that were most positive. It's really wild. Yeah, I mean I And I think know. the dudes were some of them are like the snaky, what is he would call them cuttlefish? Cuttlefish. <laughs> yeah, where they think they're gonna come out virtuous. I don't I know. I keep waiting for people to use that as a hashtag. I well, I oh I you know, just out of curiosity, I always click on bios. I just want to see, you know. Wait, why is it who is this person? Yeah, who is this person, right? And the the, the two things and this again, this is pure observation. This is not me like making shit up. Like literally go look for yourself. Eighty percent of the guys that made those comments. Uh, private profiles with uh, he him in their oh, bio. pronouns underneath. Yeah, yeah, pronouns in their in their just crazy that yeah. those were the people. Those are the guys that had a problem with that message. All the rest were on board with it, and most all, if maybe I think I saw maybe one or two girls, and even the two girls that made comments on it, it weren't they weren't necessarily negative. They thought oh, I don't really see much of that. It was like that. Yeah. It wasn't mm -hmm. like this is stupid. You have only these 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 dudes. That it's so in interesting to me because obviously social media does this. You are um, celebrated for your like your either opinions or what you say is good or wrong, not for what you actually do because nobody can see what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's all about what you say you do or what you say you care about, right? That's what it's, the term virtue signaling comes from. It reminds, I was thinking about this the other day. Do you know who wears t-shirts that say, I do jujitsu, I'm a fighter, or I live, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. when people first start, when they first start training, mm -hmm. they're the ones that want to show everybody. Yeah, the, wave the flag to everybody. The guys and girls that have been training for years, they don't wear shirts that say that shit. They yeah. don't care about yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's almost like it's this insecure, like, let me put this yeah, out. To, people sure. are secure and confident. They don't need to proclaim it so yeah. often. Well, you know? I also find it interesting that you talking about all that stuff and making a stand of this is wrong and, and the importance of health 
how there was a, a good majority of those people that spoke up that made it a political thing. It's like if you didn't, that weird? If you didn't mention right. Democrat, Republican, conservative, progressive, you didn't use any language like that whatsoever. Yeah. It's not a political thing. No, it's not at all. It's a health thing. That's you know it. what I'm saying? And it's yeah. and it's people somebody it's about people health. making a, a really bad observation around exercise and working out and lifting weights. Now the reason and it's us coming to the yes. defense of that and saying no. We're not going to let you spread bullshit like this. This is really how it affects people. This is really how powerful. This is really how good it is. And somehow that message is yeah. is political. Listen, we didn't start the war. It's a war on health is what's happening right now. We're just now speaking out. That's no, we're, all defending it it. Yeah. we're defending it. We're defending it. That's that's really what it's what it's all about. It's like, listen, you now are stepping into our space. We've been trying to help people the right way for decades. You're 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 an idiot if you think I'm going to sit here and not say anything. And if yeah. you get closer, it's not just going to be my you words. Ju you jumped so, in our sandbox and kicked kicked sand in our face. Well, and it's that's, and that's where we're at now. Yeah, I was actually watch so I was watching a documentary too, uh, and it was uh, actually on YouTube, I I believe, but it was about like East Bay punk and how the whole scene kind of started up. And so you guys are familiar with Green Day and yeah, Rancid yeah, yeah. and you know a lot of those like bigger name bands, but it kind of got through a lot of like these other like underground bands, and then how this one place in the East Bay was this sort of like haven for kids that like were just, you know, off ball kids. They had nowhere to go. And they just like, um, the owner was part of like operation Ivy, which was a big band in the, in, back in the day and wanted to create a venue. So like these kids could go and it was all ages. Like, cause punk was not accessible to younger kids. It was always just like, 21 and over and then it kind of bars bars yeah. and it became one of these things where it became like uh uh more aggressive more violent so you'd get like a whole skinhead kind of movement behind it and you know these skinheads were like a real problem and and so this place became sort of like you know it was there's no racism there's no you know sexism like you know like if you're uh, gay, your whatever, like it's this is like your your safe place, and it was like you know and all these kids were just hanging out, and that you know the weird kids, the freaks, whatever, and uh you know it was a, it was a cool place, it was like its own little oasis. Was it all and it was all connected through music? And it was all connected for the music, and it, it created this really cool, it fostered a really cool like environment for creativity, and so this is where like you know Green Day and all they they, they kind of merged out of this one club, uh, and so you know why I bring this up is because like there was there was like they were getting attacked by like uh these these other like skinhead groups that were like and this is in the bay area so people think like it's super because you know uh berkeley is very liberal it's very like you know the uh, it brought in a lot of like hippie, you know, kind of thoughts and all. And so, you know, all that, like if you go a little further across the the bay, there's like some some pocket areas where there's like hillbilly and like real like, you know, racist skinhead like communities. Uh, and so they would they would attack and bash and, and you know, bash people, beat them up and, and all this stuff. And they go to these shows and beat them up and like drive these trucks and beat. And so this was like a real problem. So they actually like drove. Uh, two, they, they found this, this place and they were like, they started to come and, and sit in on all these shows and, and just like, they're just tyrants, you know, they're coming in and like, you know, beating up kids and all this stuff. And so they just decided like they were going to fight back. And so they fought back and, and, you know, beat their asses and, and then they, they left and they stopped messing with them. But it's just like, you, you got to hold you get if, if if it's something that's like you hold sacred, right? Like I look at this as a gym, right? This is like it's it's all inclusive. Like everybody's welcome. Everybody's trying to to grow and improve, uh, and you know, and there's and, and it's getting attacked now. Like this is how I, how I look at it, and it's like totally. totally. It's for it to be able to foster and grow and be a a, a positive force. It's like you got to push off all this native bullshit. Listen, if you don't if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Right. Yep. So it's it's more about standing up than it is attacking by, or putting down. By the way, to cover just to, to touch on the why some people are saying it's political, it's because the tactics that are being used, some of the tactics I should say, that are being used to demonize fitness are to attach it to uh very unsavory uh verbiage or groups. So when you say white supremacists, for example. Uh, like everybody's like, I hate that. I don't want to be a part of that. Right. So that's why you'll see articles that'll say tied to white supremacists, far right extremists, far right extremists 
in, uh, I guess, in, in society is more people are like, oh, I don't want to be a part of that versus far left. If I say far left, a lot of people are like, what's that? But if I say far right extremists, everybody's like skinheads, supremacists. Yeah. So yeah. what yeah. they're doing, Hitler. so what they're doing with, with fitness is they're pu publishing articles and just using verbiage that where people would just read the headline and get turned off right away. So that's why some people are associating with politics because it says far right extremists more than it would say, uh, let's say far left extremists or something else, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's no. the whole reason. Anyway, no. No. speaking of kids, uh, I had to go on my butcher box and triple my order of the gluten-free nuggets because yeah. <laughs> I'm eating them all. <laughs> I'm eating all the gluten-free. Are you, are you, did you order them yet? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love them. I, I, I mean, of course you guys knew that. Do most chicken yeah, nuggets, I know you're like, <laughs> are, are, are most chicken nuggets full of gluten? Is that like, yeah, breaded. They, they all are. Yeah, breaded. So what are, they're, what are they using to not be breaded? You I know? think it's probably rice flour, corn flour. Yeah. But they're like yeah, crispy and, and they're good. Oh, they're they're better than any other chicken. So nuggets. I'm like, I'm a grown man yeah. and not to make fun of Justin, but I don't eat nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's fake. We, we made that story up. Justin is eating nuggets. For Dude, I, 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 I own it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I own the cheese. I own the nuggets. Like I have yeah, like literally. Whatever. We're working on a deal right now with Happy I have an milk. elementary yeah, school McDonald's. kid diet preference. We, you've never, hold on a second. You've yeah, never ordered. boxes. You've never ordered chicken nuggets. Nuggets when we've gone out to eat. We just created that and it just became a thing. But anyway. Well, I would prefer that to sushi. So that's, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But anyway, I've never like I haven't had like a just like nuggets as a meal. Yeah. It's as an adult forever. That's what I'm doing with these gluten. I actually people. haven't <laughs> done that. And I'm, I'm only like 15 of them. Yeah. And it's like protein, it's really good and it's and gluten free. So well they just bumped our box size up, so I might have to do that's, the same that's thing. That's another reason why I, I triple Yeah. Because yeah. right now I get yelled at from Katrina if I eat that that's his staple like meal for him. He oh, eats really? those chicken nuggets on the regular. It's like his yeah. favorite thing. Dude, speaking of like cause you talk about gluten and, and it made me think about gut health and stuff. Bro, this is how big of a deal and people who 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 dealt with this understand, but people who've never dealt with this don't get this. It's such a big de deal. Gut health is such a big deal and makes such a huge impact on on your body's performance um, and health and muscle and fat loss. Like, it's insane. So I de I've dealt with gut issues on and off for years and years and years, decades. And I treated myself for SIBO effectively, which got me about 85% of the way there. So my gut got back to about 85% of normal, which was huge for me. You guys know this for the first six years of the podcast, it was always a continual struggle. I couldn't eat more than a certain amount. Couldn't eat certain foods. If I, and, and my gut would go off, it would last weeks. It was this terrible back and forth battle. Fixed the SIBO, got me about 85% of the way there. But then I would always get this kind of reoccurring, would have to treat myself again. And then we had, uh, I can't remember who we had on the show. It was uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's functional medicine practice. I feel so bad. Maybe Doug can find his name. We had him on the show. Great guy. Love him. Uh, I feel embarrassed. I forgot his name. So we'll get it. And he said that when you fix SIBO, you have to wait afterwards to allow your gut to heal because the SIBO is gone, but you have a mucosa lining in the gut. You have the gut wall itself that's still probably inflamed. So it's like, okay, you took out the, the stick out of your leg. You're not cured. You have to wait for the, everything to heal. And that's why, you know, you end up getting SIBO again. And that's why maybe you're not hundred percent yet. Or what's his name? Dr. Will Cole. There you go. Thank you so much. Great guy. Love his content. So anyway, um, so that was like, oh shit, that really hit home. If, if once I effectively treat SIBO, if it comes back, I really need to look at like how I can heal my gut. And part of that is don't go too crazy with the food, treat myself like I did when I had SIBO. The other part of it was I went on, uh, oral BPC 157 KPV. Mm -hmm. So this is, these are mm -hmm. peptides. And this is the pill form. Pill form. Yeah. So when you take oral BPC-157, it helps speed up the regeneration and healing of the gut, just like it does when you inject it into a, an injury. Yeah. Okay. KPV, it works differently, but similarly in the sense that it speeds up healing. It also has some antimicrobial effects. Okay. When did you get the KPV? And why didn't you pass that to me? No, it's combined. In the oh, pill. it's in it. Okay. Didn't you get it? Yeah. yeah, okay. also so, yeah I didn't OPP, know that was in there. If you know me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't change the names. They're so weird. C3PO's yeah, in there, there as well. So so it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I've been taking it, right? Didn't notice much. About a week into it, oh, I think I'm noticing something. About, um, I think I'm, I'm like 30 or 40 days in. Yeah. I'm like, okay, like 95% normal. Like, wow. I mean, my gut, it's weird. Like, I don't, it's almost like it was. Oh, wow. Not quite, but almost like it was before the shit hit the fan uh, wow. with my gut health. Wow. And now what's the result of that? I'm absorbing what I'm eating. I'm literally like, I feel anabolic like I haven't felt in years and years and years. Why? Because I could push the calories. 
Hmm. And I don't hmm. hurt myself. I don't oh, get wow. bloated. I don't oh, get wow. anything. Wild, right? That's exciting. Yeah. I know. You know, you you touched on something. I think it's such an important thing to, I just want to piggyback off of it because I've seen this happen with many clients, with family and friends that have struggled with like gut health. And they do exactly what you said where they 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 get some, they go to a functional, functional practitioner. They get like, oh, you need to stay away from these foods or whatever. And then they eliminate the foods. They do start feeling better. So then they reintroduce. Yep. And then, and they get away with it, right? They reintroduce it. It's like, oh my God, I yep. can have this again. And then they do it two or three times. And then it goes back to like abusing it or having it in their diet all the time. And then it comes back. And then they chalk it up as that didn't work. No. And it's, it's too like, soon. No, like, yes, it did. Or yes, it was. You know what I'm saying? But you can't, it's not a, it's not a green light for you to come back and like let it back into your diet every day again. No, it's, it's like, like walking, it's like walking around with a rock in your shoe. So your foot gets cut and you're bleeding. Then you take your shoe off, you take the rock out. And you're like, wow, I feel so much better. So now I'm going to go running. But the, the wound never fully healed. Yeah. So you're not allowing yourself to yeah, heal. Yeah, you took the problem out, but you didn't actually let yourself That's heal. That's the part that was mind blowing for me when I first, when yeah. I heard Dr. Will Cole say that. And then the, the BPC and the KPV combo sp speeds that up. Yeah. Is what's happening. Like this is 30 days later. And I'm like, this is weird. I haven't, I haven't felt like this in pff, 15 years. Wow. At least, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to keep going. hope to get there because, yeah, I've just been going through the treatment too, like the SIBO stuff. Yeah. So just started and then I want to treat, you know, the problem. And then, you know, I'm also in conjunction with that doing the BPC. That's awesome. Speaking yeah. of uh, inflammatory stuff, you, you were telling me about Courtney's mom using Ned. I was, yeah. What was that for? So she was having trouble sleeping and, and so she's she actually uh, had – uh, melanoma cancer and, mm. and had treatments for that. And, um, it, at night she was getting these really bad, uh, muscle cramps, like, and so it kept waking her up and was like, and she asked Courtney if we had anything to help with sleep or anything with that. And so, uh, I gave, I gave her, her the, um, the Ned sleep. And then also like the 15, uh, hundred milligram, um, uh, Ned, uh, CBD. Was it the capsules or was it the oil? Uh, it was the capsules. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so it, um, and also like the mellow as well, but, um, she, she just started with the sleep and it was just like, Oh my God, I didn't, I didn't get up once. Like she was able to sleep through the night and then continue this. And then, um, it's just been really helpful and restorative for her to, to be able to get sleep finally and start healing. So yeah. that was you, great. You do the capsules now over the dropper, huh? You don't. It's the it's, same thing. It's just easier. You don't taste it because the oil, you put it under your tongue, you taste it. Yeah. Capsules, you just I would think the under the tongue would be faster, no, because of. <sighs> Supposedly, I haven't noticed a difference. Uh, I know. I'm, now, now, Jessica, okay. Uh, uh, Jessica likes the oil better. She says it works better for her. But the, I just do the capsules. I really, ever since the, the Mellow ended up working so well for me, I really ever used the Ned Sleep. You had a magnesium deficiency for sure. 100%. Mm -hmm. I for mean, sure. it's like it's like night and day. And I, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible about being consistent like you are with any supplement, no matter how bad I need it or not. And uh, because I have streaks of inconsistency with taking it and, and then getting back, it's like always so obvious to me. It's like, oh my God, like I have to do this. Like I have to... I'm definitely deficient in magnesium and it, it, it for sure shows up in how well I sleep. That's yeah. It's awesome. unbelievable. Awesome. All right. So today's shout out, let's do Peter Atia. Uh, since I talked about him earlier, so it's, uh, you find him on Instagram at Peter Atia MD. Uh, one of the smartest people, um, in the space when it comes to great to information. Health. Does he have his own podcast or does he just do other shows shows? I, I know he was on Joe Rogan. Does. I've only yeah, seen him on other a, podcasts. I believe he has his own. Okay. He's been an yeah. interviewer or an interviewee quite a bit. Being fit and muscular is kind of cool, but you know when it sucks when you want to buy nice clothes, they never fit properly. Well, that is until now. There's a company called state and Liberty that makes tailored feeling suits and shirts and pants for people with muscle. In fact, I'm wearing one of the shirts right now uh, off the rack. I have suits off the rack that fit me beautifully. So it's made for guys with wide shoulders, a small waist, and big arms. Basically, if you're fit and muscular and you want to look nice, go to this company. It will fit you the best. State and Liberty. Go to mpstateandliberty.com, and uh, on that link, you'll get 10% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Jesse from New Hampshire. Jesse. What's going on, man? How can we help you? What's up? What's going on, fellas? Not much, dude. Not much. All right. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, I'm currently on phase three of MAPS Anabolic. Um, 
by the way, it's a great program. I love it. Uh, I was a little hesitant at first, but I've really gotten into it. It's been awesome. Um, so my question is, uh, I was planning on going to Symmetry next. Um, but the more I listen to you guys, the more I really learn that you wrote them in order. Um, I don't know if it's like a dead set order that you have to run it or, you know, the way that it goes. I've only been, um, working out since October of 2022. So I'm relatively new to the whole gym lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, Jesse, you're, you're kind of young. Did you ever watch the original ghostbusters? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You remember when they like, don't cross the streams, you're going to blow up the whole world. <laughs> right. If you do right, the right. wrong order. It's going to go, you're going to go backward. No, yeah, I'm just kidding. Listen, <laughs> the order you're going to do is perfectly fine. We did write them in a particular order, um, but really it's about which one's appropriate for your body. So there's not necessarily an, an order uh, that everybody should run. Now, if you're kind of like relatively new to strength training, you know, a, a good uh, a good order would be like MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic. Then you could follow, you know, anything after that. But really symmetry could be added anywhere. Yeah. And you, following anabolic is going to be amazing. And and there isn't specifically an order except for kind of where you start and what's appropriate for your body. So I'm glad you asked that question because new listeners might get that impression as well. I, I love symmetry after a MAPS anabolic and for where you're at in your journey. I honestly, to just to piggyback on the salsa, that, that's the one program that really wasn't like thought of like that. It was like this really could be inserted as somebody's first program or in the middle of any program. The the anabolic- kind of bridges anywhere. Yeah, the anabolic, the performance, and aesthetic were written with the intent of people following those three in that order. But symmetry can be inserted anywhere, including very first or in between programs, and you're only going to gain benefit from doing yeah. that. Yeah, but again, to be clear, if MAPS, uh, you know, aesthetic was appropriate for you with your current fitness level, would you would, would there be anything wrong with going MAPS aesthetic and then MAPS performance and MAPS anabolic, which would be the, no. And I'm just saying that for everybody else listening right now. Getting started is much more important than the order in terms of like what's appropriate. Um is, you know, is the program appropriate for you is the right question. But symmetry is, is great for most people. You're going to, you're going to love it. If you had great results with anabolic, let me, what were your results with anabolic, by the way? You said you loved it. What did you see from it? Um, like my traps blew up. My biceps definitely got bigger. Um, overall strength in general. Um, I kind of, before I, I picked up anabolic, I was doing a lot of five by five. So I was really focusing on just, you know, bench, um, squats, overhead press. And it wasn't until kind of Adam drove home. He's like deadlift, do deadlift, do deadlift was something I always shied away from just because, you know, I didn't, I didn't know how to properly do it. And then I started doing that. So that's definitely like one of my favorites now. So awesome. Yeah. I was just hammering the, uh, the five by fives for the most part. Yeah. I, so symmetry is going to be great. And then after that, um, if you want to go into a different program, you could either go maps performance if you want better function, or if you love the strength route, power lift or strong would be great after symmetry, but symmetry is a great place to go next. Okay. I just didn't know if it would be, um, like where I'm at, uh, just being new to it. Should I like go to symmetry and kind of shy away from, you know, uh, working on, cause a lot of what I've been doing is trying to work on my, my form. Um, so I'm not like really lifting crazy heavy or anything like that. I'm just trying to make sure that I'm doing it properly and trying to nail that down before I move on. Yeah. No matter what, you should always think that way mm -hmm. regardless. Uh, but you'd be fine going into any program that's appropriate. The ones that would probably be harder, to that, that may be more likely to be inappropriate would be the high, high volume type programs that we have aesthetic split, um, PED. yeah, PED, especially those are the programs people always go to first because they think for some reason that that's going to do the best thing. But those are the ones that people can overtrain in most often because of the high volume. But I mean, if you can handle the volume, your body, if it's appropriate for you, those are great as well. But I think symmetry. And then after that, you could do power lift strong performance either one of those would be amazing afterwards do you have symmetry by the way i do i do have okay it. you're good what do you want to follow after that i want to give you something um i don't know to be honest like i haven't really looked into uh to all of your programs so i don't know what a lot of them entail but like i would like to actually start like 
you know, lifting heavy and start moving the weight up a little bit. So power lift. whatever right. you just yeah, that. Mass power lift. We'll send that to you. So after symmetry, go for that. Awesome. Awesome. That's great, man. You got it, man. Thanks for calling in, brother. Oh, hold on. I got um oh, the second, second go part. It. Go for it. Sorry. All right. So the second part is uh, with my my diet and like my intake or whatever. And I've listened to you guys very, very specifically on, you know, what what is important. You know what I mean? Like protein intake um, and just getting calories, like not leaving them super low, but getting them up to, you know, a point that's, what do you call it? Reverse dieting. And then you can bring it back. Um, so I've been kind of, I've been struggling with that from what I have tracked. I've been around like 2,300 calories and like 150 grams of protein where I should be closer to about 2,800 calories and like 180 grams of protein, somewhere around there. Uh, I'm just struggling to really get to that point because um, I don't know, work works kind of crazy and, and can be all over the place from time to time. So I can't always just, you know, meal prep everything, working late, getting home and all that kind of stuff. So I just looking for any tips on that. You're a perfect person that would... Uh... I, I don't know if you've been following long enough. I used to post this recipe for a shake and I know it's been in our forum too. Uh, and here's an example of like how I like to use protein shakes, right? You know, you need to be, you need additional calories. You know, you need a little bit more protein. It's hard scheduling wise, meal prepping wise. Uh, and so at the end of the night, I make myself like a, you know, peanut butter, banana protein shake that I blend on ice and it's like a milkshake. And so that's like my last thing that I eat before I go to bed. So that's an example of where I would utilize a, a shake is with someone. Like, now, if you're getting uh, two of your meals already from shakes or bars to get your 150 grams, then I might not go that direction. But if you're getting 150 grams of protein, mostly through Whole Foods right now, then I would just add a shake in the evening like that, and that, that'll yep. hit your target. Yep. Okay, so that would be like you're saying the appropriate time where to you know to throw a shake in there. Yeah, totally, sure. I, I, this is how okay. I like, mm -hmm. so my goal, okay, the way I, I communicate protein shakes and bars to clients is it is not ideal. I always want to start, I want to go after whole foods. That's my goal. But the reality is there's times where I have a day like you're, you, you seem to be having, which is I know I'm short on protein. I know I can handle more calories right now. It's the end of the day. I don't feel like making a big old meal or defrosting chicken or doing something like that right now. And so I'll blend myself a, you know, banana, peanut butter, whey smoothie on ice mm -hmm. and in the night like that. Like that's a, that's a great way, in my opinion, to utilize protein shakes. Now, again, I go back the next day and I'm like, all right, my goal is to hit that 180, 190 through Whole Foods. And again, if I miss it, then I'm using that protein shake. But then other days where I'm like, oh, cool, I hit it. I don't need it today. So that's how I would approach it. Can you that. have dairy, Jesse? Yeah. Oh, have you seen, have you tried Magic Spoon cereal? Or that. That's yeah, other. yeah. Because of you guys, I got Magic Spoon. I got Creatures of Habit. You guys have been selling <laughs> those. Well, those are both super convenient. <laughs> yeah, great. yeah, great. Yeah, so. that's a, that's actually the other thing I would do. Either a Magic Spoon bowl of cereal, which I love to have at night. That's yep. I never eat Magic Spoon cereal for breakfast. It's always my late night snack to hit mm -hmm. my protein intake. That's literally how I use it. Okay, yeah, because like breakfast is all, like I know where I'm missing. Um, just because I the time I go to work, like I, I'm not going to wake up like super, super early to, you know, make eggs and bacon and like, you know, do the whole nine. So I'm just kind of skimping by on breakfast um, and really more focusing on, you know, lunch and, and dinner is a big one. So. Well, so, yeah, okay. you, so you creatures of habit yeah, in the morning, that's why you do, in the morning, do creatures of habit then, because here's the thing too, though, when I have somebody who's low on protein, that's normally what happens is yeah. they have a light protein breakfast, which again is, this is part of why we partnered with creatures of habit and love that as a, as a, as getting you at least started at least 30 something grams of protein. Now the, again, let's go like that's, uh, the default or whatever, but the ideal would be, I don't know what you had for dinner last night, but whatever meat you had, I would save for the morning and I would literally just throw three eggs in the, in the, in the skillet real quick minutes. and yeah, not even 10 minutes, literally yeah. whatever it takes to, to scramble up three eggs with all that meat. And then I literally just eat it like that or wrap it in a tortilla or, or a piece of bread and I eat it. That would be like a staple breakfast for me. That doesn't take a lot of time. That's super high in protein. And it was convenient because I just used the leftovers from the night before dinner. If you can't do that, that is a lot of work and it's not realistic. Then creatures of habit would be the, the second. But if you don't get, at least 30 to 50 grams in that first meal, it's really tough. Yeah, you're playing catch up. Yeah, to, to hit the, the your target. So that would be my advice. 
All right. Cause that's basically what I'm doing. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm just playing catch up all day, trying to yeah. pack it in all at the end of the day when I get out of work. So I'm definitely going to take that advice and run with it. Okay. Excellent. All right, Jesse. Thank you, ma'am. Hey, thanks fellas. I appreciate it. You got it. All right. Yeah. I'm glad he went a little deeper. That's almost always the issue. Yeah. Is that they, they start really focusing on eating like 11 or 12. By that point, now you're behind the eight ball. But mm -hmm. if you start out with a a good calorie, good protein yeah, breakfast, load it up early. Oh yeah, I mean there you go, you're you're set. Yeah, if you're a meat eater and you like your most of your meals are centered around steak, chicken, yeah, you make extra. Yeah, you just it. I mean yeah. I've I don't, I don't know we've done I've done that most of my my adult life where I just yep. Oh, make enough to where there's, you know, I can make two or three meals the next day off of it. And you just adding rice or eggs to like a, you know, a, a meal that you had for dinner like, oh, yeah. is a great it's way a to make. Complete meal. Just yeah. Boom. Like yeah. yeah. Easy. Our next caller is Megan from Missouri. Hi, Megan. How can we help oh you? Hi. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. Good. How happy. are you doing? Good. I have been listening to you all since 2016. So this is, this is wow. crazy. <laughs> wow. Holy moly. Thank you. You made yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks Back for having had me hair. on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Good so at the heart of my question is, am I ready for MAPS anabolic advance? And I'll give you some insight as to why I'm asking that. So I've been lifting consistently since, or, well, for like eight years, um, tracking my macros, all that good stuff. I've ran anabolic twice. I ran aesthetic. I ran performance. So I'm really well versed in your programs as well. Um, about two years ago, I made a really dramatic career change. So I had been working in pharmaceutical sales for about a decade, really flexible schedule. I could concentrate on my fitness and all that good stuff. Um, but corporate America was kind of sucking my soul dry. So <laughs> I decided to become a teacher. And so I went into the classroom for two years. Um, but in order to support myself on a teacher salary, I was actually working like two to three part-time jobs on top of teaching full-time. So my sleep dramatically decreased, my stress dramatically increased. Um, I just didn't have as much time to dedicate to what I loved and fitness and all that good stuff, just, you know, life priorities. Um, so with that, I was still lifting consistently three days a week, full body, but like my strength kind of tanked. Um, I know I wasn't hitting my protein as, as well as I had been in the past, all that good stuff. Um, so in May, I decided to actually transition out of the classroom. I'm now working for a curriculum company. So it's um, it's totally remote, work from home, much more flexible with my schedule. Um, so when I made that transition, like I really want to get my fitness back. I want to get my strength back and kind of get my body composition to where it had been <laughs> in the past. Um, so I decided to run MAPS 15, the advanced version, and I just finished that Sunday. I loved it. I ran it in just like a slight deficit and actually gained strength in the gym. So it was it was awesome. Rad. Um, so my question then is now, am I ready for something like MAPS Anabolic Advance, like something with that kind of novelty? Is that what like I need in my fitness journey to kind of get myself back to my old strong self? Wow. What a great question. And thank you so much for the background. So, okay. So before, before the stressful change and the lack of sleep and you followed aesthetic and anabolic, how was your progress then compared to how you're doing now? Let's compare not, I'm talking about before you made the switch and you had to like stop working out as much and all that stuff. So when you were following all those other programs, how was that versus how you are now? Um, I would still say I was stronger back then. Um, I had run like several reverse diets and also cuts and I'd gotten my metabolism to where I was like maintaining on at least 2000 calories and like, you know, squatting. I think my highest squat at that point was like 150, 160. Um, so pretty strong. So okay. I'm not quite there yet. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. No, the reason why I'm asking is because, uh, I don't, a lot of people who work out consistently make the mistake of going as far as their body will tolerate, which is beyond what's ideal. Okay. So and that's why I wanted to ask you that question it's probably going to be better for you to do a different program after maps 15 and then maybe going to anabolic advanced. Um, okay. I, yeah, I would like to see you do something like performance or okay. anabolic and then going to something like anabolic or advanced Not, or symmetry. Actually, that's, that's a better, that's thinking. a better option. Yeah, I think symmetry would be better. Yeah. I like maps 15 symmetry and then anabolic advanced. It's yeah. That's together. great. That's, that's actually better. Go okay. map symmetry and then go anabolic advanced. But that's not to say you couldn't go to anabolic advanced now. Just a smarter yeah, path. You probably get better results if you did it through when symmetry first, though. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Do you have symmetry? 
I don't know. All right, we'll send that to you. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Yeah, Thank I, you. Yeah, you got it. No problem. So do that. And then after that, go to Anabolic Advance and then uh, give us a follow up. Let us know how Yeah, I'd love going. to hear how you're doing after that. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you so much. That's so cool. No Appreciate problem. you all. Thank all right, you. Megan. All right. Yeah, take care. Have a good one. Bye. You know, the problem with that is um, uh, so many people who've been trained for a long ass time, if they all did MAPS, and all, uh, excuse me, MAPS 15, the advanced version, mm -hmm. they'd all probably get better results anyway. Uh, right. Because yeah. we tend to push it so hard. That's why I asked that question. And yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if even then, yeah, what a she stark was doing contrast too much. that would be. Yeah. Didn't she seem like a teacher? Yeah. She felt totally. like a teacher, oh, would, right? Yeah. Oh, oh medical sales? What the she energy do? alone. Pharmaceutical sales. Pharmaceutical sales. Yeah, she's yeah. definitely more of a teacher, I feel like. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, she doesn't look like an evil lizard person working for the pharma companies. I'm just kidding. Way to go and I know. I know. It's just, it's just, I would have done pharmaceutical sales. I, would, I thought about doing something like that, like, I, or medical sales, like a striker or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. same here. They make good money. They, <laughs> they do. <laughs> but after the, after what happened, I would have been like, ah, uh, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, yeah. No, I think sy symmetry was is going to be perfect for you know, for most people watching right now who are uh, consistent. Uh, oftentimes, reducing volume gets your body to get better results, and a program like symmetry. Is, a, is appropriate for most people because most people don't train that way. Yeah, and I think that we're, we're always pushing the like, okay, so, and I love that you pointed out that she could probably, there's p jump from 15 to advanced and be okay. But if she can do something with less volume uh, and less intensity and get as good or more results, you would- That's better. It's better. Yeah. yeah. It's better to go with that, which I think symmetry is that. Yeah. It isn't Gradually as, build that momentum. Yeah. And then after that, hit that so totally. you can continue on but with the But I will say when you do anabolic advanced, if it's appropriate, uh, I mean, and this is just the feedback we've been getting, oh, like yeah. people's it's, gains- Yeah. Are blowing people up. Oh, ridiculous. Ridiculous. It is that kind of a program. Our next caller is Catherine from Colorado. Hi, Catherine. How can we help you? Um, hey, yeah. So thanks for having me on. Um, really cool to be on here. Um, I'll just jump right in. I'm going to read my question. Um, so I found you guys back in 2020 when all of this started. Uh, I'm really grateful for everything that you've taught me. I studied kinesiology and health science and um, just remember graduating hungry for more. Um, and sorry, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> um, and since I found your podcast, I feel like you guys have helped me grow in that passion and helped me continue to learn. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank awesome. you. Um, okay. So I'll just jump right in. I'm 28 years old. I'm five foot five. I've been lifting for 10 years and I currently lift five days a week. I do three leg days and two upper body days. I don't really do cardio except for some jump rope in between sets. Um, I do yoga on my off days and I hike as much as I can, but I don't do these for the purpose of cardio. I just love being active. Um, so since I quit birth control in 2016, I, um, I had amenorrhea, um, and I've had that since then, um, in September of 2020, I had some pretty severe hormonal symptoms that resulted in a 50 pound weight gain over five months. So it's heat flashes, vertigo, migraines, and depression. Um, I was a really lean 120 pounds to begin with, and I was 170 by the end of it. Um, so I cut and reversed four times from early 2021 until fall of 2022. Um, with each reverse, I gained more and more weight. And with each cut, I became more and more resistant to weight loss. Um, I kept plateauing and never hit my goal. So in um, September of 2022, I started bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, and I started a cut at the same time with a coach. I lost only five pounds over the course of three months. We dropped all the way down to 1350, um, and I reversed to 1800 calories and gained another 10 pounds in four months at the 1800 calories. So I was 183 at this point. Um, so beginning March of this year, I started Ozempic. My hormones are beginning to regulate, but still not 100%. I've lost about 25 pounds. I'm 157, um, but my calories are drastically low at 1,200. I don't feel as lean and my arms as weight and, and my arms as and my waist as I was at this weight last time. My goal weight is 150 to 155 and to stay there during the reverse. I don't want to stop Ozempic yet. I want to lose the weight finally, but I'm very afraid of what the reverse is going to look like and what the damage could be from dropping so low in calories. Um, so considering everything that's going already going on, um, what would be the best way to reverse and keep the weight off? Should I reverse while on, a, while on Ozempic? Um, any advice on where to go from here? 
Yeah. So before I answer your question, I'm going to tell you what I think you should do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll answer your question. But, uh, actually you were, you stopped birth control 2016. How long were you on it for up until that point? Um, I want to say probably four or five years. Okay. Which, what were you, what were you taking? Um, the pill. I, I don't really, I think I switched brands like several times. Okay. So it was, it, it might have contributed to what's going on, but it might have masked something that developed uh, while you were on the hormones that now you're starting to have to kind of deal with. Um, mm-hmm. My advice to you, before I answer your question, because I know that's what you want the answer to, but I'll, my advice to you is to, to not focus on the scale and not focus on any goals in terms of fat loss or yeah. gain or body sculpting. At your age, I would work with a functional medicine practitioner to get to the root cause. And I say at your age because uh, this is very solvable if you do this the right way. If you don't, and if you keep pushing weight gain, weight loss, let me try bioidenticals, let me throw some peptides at myself without figuring out the root cause, this is going to get harder and harder as you get older. I don't think you're going to solve your problem, in other words, with the path that you're currently on. I think a functional medicine practitioner is going to be your best bet for figuring out the root cause of what's happening. And it may be as simple as, uh, you know, a a gut issue, you know, gut health, poor gut health can cause tremendous, uh, havoc with the hormones and inflammation and the body. And oftentimes goes, goes mad. It's oftentimes masked with hormone therapy. And sometimes people don't even have gastro, uh, symptoms, Sometimes they feel like, oh, my, everything else is okay. Maybe it isn't gut issue. So, and I'm just, I'm just wanting to, so that might not be even be it, but I think the best person to get to the root cause of what's going on is going to be some, somebody like that. And I don't think you should focus on gaining or losing weight because that's going to keep you away from figuring out the root, root issue. Yeah, I a hundred percent agree. And I wanted to address the feeling that you have of why you feel like you don't look the way you did when you were this way before. And this is the drawback of things like Ozempic or cutting calories like this is that you lost as much, if not more muscle when you did, when you cut. So the weight came down, but you probably lost an equal amount of muscle as you did body fat and, or potentially more uh, of the muscle on the way down because of how low the calories and you're just not supporting uh, the muscle that you do have on your body with a- enough calories and nutrients, primarily protein. And so you're going to run into this vicious cycle uh, if you don't address what Sal's saying. So my, my recommendation, are you not in the forum, the MP hormones, uh, the, uh, no, no, I mean, no, excuse M- me, uh, MP holistic, health. Yeah, MP holistic health forum. It's free. Um, I think I'm in the mind hub hormones one, but I don't know if I'm in the holistic health one. Yeah. Get in the holistic yeah. health one. Uh, that's Dr. Cabral and their team. It's free. It's free. Also. Are you now you have a coach right now that's helping you with your diet and all that stuff. Um, I currently don't have a coach, but I, I am seeing a functional medicine practitioner. Oh, there you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she actually is the one who put me on Ozempic. She, um, so she found SIBO. Um, she found that I had mold in my system. So we got rid of the mold. We got rid of, um, the SIBO for the most part, it does kind of tend to come back. Um, but we, I've gotten better at better kind of tackling that. Um, so that was definitely part of the problem. Um, and then, yeah, she's the one who put me on the Ozempic. She um, thinks it could be PCOS or maybe like a combination of things or maybe the birth control. Um, I have seen like six or seven doctors since all of this started. Yeah. Um, and she's the only one who has like, I feel like, I feel like, cause it really helped me, but I still don't really know what's going on. Well, so, mm-hmm. so, cause it can take a while, right? You can solve some of the issues, but then your body has to heal. So, mm-hmm. um, you solved the SIBO issue. You got tested again and, and the SIBO is gone or do you, or is it still, cause sometimes it could take a while to, to deal with that. Yeah. Um, I think it was gone for a little bit. I never really like retested it, but like I knew at some point that I was like, okay, it's gone. And then I kind of get a feeling I'm like, okay, it's coming back. So she okay. will put me on an antibiotic and then we'll just kind of, um, go from there. Is she using herbals or antibiotics? Antibiotic antibiotics i i prefer the herbal method um so i do try and like when when it comes back i try and go that route okay. first but sometimes that's not always 100 percent effective with all the stuff yeah. i got going yeah they on. can they can work with antibiotics too okay so and then what about um the mold uh, have you gotten retested for the mold toxicity mm-hmm. that's completely gone it is okay so there's a detox issue that's going on in your body it sounds like and it, it uh, you know this person has probably identified that 
And if you're mm -hmm. working with them, I would not focus on weight gain or weight loss. I would work on being totally healthy. That's what's going to get you where you want, by the way. So I mm -hmm. would continue to focus on that. Um, I, I would not worry too much about, you know, cutting and gaining and bulking. I would feed my body appropriately, eat when I'm hungry, eat whole natural foods, let my body settle wherever it's at. But you probably have a period of healing that you got to go through since you've, now that you've gotten rid. So here's what happens a lot of times. People have mold or they'll have SIBO. They'll get rid of it and they're like, cool, I can jump right back into, yeah. you know, what I was doing before, what I want to do. No, no, no. Now you have to heal. Now there's a period of healing. And what happens is, and this is why SIBO is so often reoccurring, is that people get rid of the SIBO, don't allow things like the mucosa lining to heal, don't allow the inflammation to go away, don't allow the junctions between the, the cells of the gut to kind of repair. Then they go back to, you know, you know life as, as it was, and then the SIBO comes back because of motility issues or whatever. So you got to give yourself some time to heal. I would give you like a year. Yeah. That of, one's deceptively long. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I know, I know that for sure. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would go for a full year. And then if you need to get back on something for SIBO, see if your functional medicine practitioner, and now here's the deal. Some people just don't, don't work. Herbals just don't work for them and they got to go the, the pharmaceutical route. So I would, you know, um, I obviously don't know this person and you've been working with them, but I'd say, Hey, um, you know, I, I just want to, I just want to optimize my health for the I'm next so, year. I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm stumped on why, uh, she went Ozempic. Well, it's a semaglutide peptide, right? You're probably, you're probably going through a compound pharmacy. The, you know, the thing with the GLP one agonist is they're finding that it's helping people kind of rewire behaviors. Yeah, and this behavioral. is why I think functional medicine practitioners are starting to work with hmm. things like that. If you were not working with a functional medicine practitioner, I would caution you against it. But the fact that you're working with someone. I just feel like if the, if she's even going to mess with a peptide, it would be something like BPC-157, like the pill form for, for helping her gut heal. Potentially. But Ozempic, if she's, if she's already low calorie and I'm trying to get her to eat more balanced and healthy, stay away from the things that are upsetting her gut, go after protein intake that's going to help her build muscle, speed her metabolism up. I wouldn't think Ozempic would be yeah, the route I would go. trying to build. Well, you remember like, we talked when we talked to Dr. Seeds, uh, he explained some of the pathways and how it works, mm -hmm. and it's much more than just right, right. Sure. So Make I, you eat I, less, and I think that's probably what because you're going to see more functional practitioners work with uh, things like because it helps correct type. some of the behavioral issues. Yes, uh, so it can work with that is is the goal is the idea. So I, I would follow their advice, but I really, Catherine, I would not focus on trying to cut. Or 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 any kind of aesthetic goal, I would focus on performance in the gym, get strong. mobility, and health, and that's going to get you where you want to go. And I would do it for a year, even if you feel great, you know, four months. You're like, oh, I feel so strong. I want to whatever. Just be like, no, nah, I'm going to give myself a year because it can take a while to heal. I mean, some of the symptoms that you were mentioning, and you know, how you've been to six or seven doctors. Like, even if you got rid of the causes, that's going to take a while for your body to heal, and it takes a while for the central nervous system even to forget essentially uh, that threat. And that's, you know, that's, there's, that's now a theory that a lot of people are floating that the CNS kind of has this memory of the past threat. And the longer you move away from it, the better your body is at not all of a sudden jumping back into where it was before. So uh, that's, that's my advice to you. I, I, I hope that, does that help? Um, yeah, I kind of had a feeling you guys were going to say something like that. I think um, what I'm, I, the, the crossroad that I'm kind of at now, cause I'm, I'm really approaching my, my goal weight, I guess, is like, do I reverse off the Ozempic and reverse my calories or do I stay on the Ozempic and reverse my calories yeah. or do I just stop counting calories, stop doing Ozempic? You know, what, how would you? No, uh, too much, <laughs> too much all at once. I would mm -hmm. reverse the calories while on Ozempic. Okay. And then I would, I would lower the dose of Ozempic and then come off. Okay. Okay. That's how I would approach it. And, and really like back to the focusing on getting strong I, it, it'll it will feel like it's a slow process but if you if you know you're getting healthier and you're healing and you're getting better you will start to build muscle and when you start to build muscle and you start to get stronger it will speed up your metabolism this in turn will lean you out i mean we can put remember we can put five pounds of weight on the scale and you actually get leaner if we mm -hmm. add five pounds and all of its muscle you yeah. you're technically a leaner person and you will feel and look that way 
So, and, and if you're that low a calorie, I think that's the direction that we need to go. Also, you know, MP Holistic Health is a forum. There's functional medicine practitioners in there. You can ask other people questions, other functional medicine practitioners questions, just to see if there's any, you know, other directions or advice or, or areas that you may want to look into. Okay. All right. Cool. That's helpful. I All appreciate right. it. Yeah. Right, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. Right. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you so much. You got it. I thought that was such an interesting a direction that a functional practitioner so here's would the go. Thing. He, Both it doesn't sound antibiotics and then Ozempic. It doesn't sound typical. We don't know the history and what they've been doing together. Right. That's yeah. why I'm a little. Yeah, we don't know the. That's context. why I'm careful. On its on the surface, uh, I mean, most functional medicine practitioners I've worked with, they don't go uh, pharmaceutical unless they have to. Right. They've so already gone through that's the why it was so route. weird to me to yeah. hear antibiotics and Ozempic well, in the same plus conversation. Well, bioidentical hormones. Oh, right. Yeah. That's but true. but it, it, again, like I, we don't know what they've done and how far she's gone. And there's so much in this that's like we would we would do an hour and a half with her. I know. Just trying to work it through. And it's not even. Uh, she said she'd been through multiple physicians. Too. I hope yeah. she I hope she gets in the forum with Cabral and here's what they because maybe you're right. Maybe there's something that we're not hearing yeah. or that we don't know. And then he, he also would go, oh, yeah, I understand why they're going that route. Um, but I also think there's, there's okay because a functional practitioner now can prescribe these things. And there's a lot of money in fucking peptides for that. You're going to see more and more of these yeah. functional practitioners utilizing that and pushing that. It's going to, it reminds me of like the, the chiropractic move when we saw so many people that would get into that space and then it turned into a money grab more than anything else. And it was very sm small percentage of really good chiropractors that I would meet going forward. I feel like we're going to see that same movement into functional practitioners with like a, what's going on in the peptide. I market. hope not. I, you know, I hope not, uh, but if they're used on, properly, they can Money be very, greed, you're right. I, I'm saying I hope not because uh, that would suck, but I mean, you're probably right. I, we don't know the case here. That's the only thing I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I know that there is an appropriate way to use these things. Um, you know, when you understand the context of what's going on. And so I, that's why I'm always very careful because what I don't know is maybe they did do all these things right. and I tell her, don't do that. And then she stops. And then, yeah, yeah. And, but here's, here's the thing that we do know. She had mold toxicity mm -hmm. and SIBO. Mm -hmm. There is a detoxifying pathway that's that that needed to get worked out, and she still needs to heal. I mean, yeah. she didn't get her period for years. She thinks she has PCOS. She's talking about all these crazy weight fluctuations, hormonal issues. Like, there was some shit that was going yeah. on. Yeah. The mold was a part of it, but... Uh, sometimes you get the mold toxicity because you're exposed to mold. The other times you get it is because you're exposed to mold and your body doesn't get rid of it for some other reason. Mm -hmm. So we don't know necessarily what's going on, but it was de there's definitely something. And if she did solve it, it's going to take a while. And this, this is a lot of people don't understand this. When you oftentimes think, look, if you, if you have a knee injury because of the way you're walking and then you fix the way you're walking, you don't go oh, run all of a sudden. You got to let it heal before you can go. <laughs> Push yourself. A lot of people don't know this. Like, oh, I got rid of the mold. Now I'm going to go do all this other stuff. Or the SIBO's yeah. gone. Now so I'm going to go. So tempting when you're feeling really good. Correct. Like you yeah. solved it. That, that was my mistake a hundred yeah. times. So our next caller is Josh from Ohio. Josh, what's happening, man? What's How up, can Josh? we help you? Not much. Uh, first off, just say thank you guys. You guys do a great job. Um, been listening to you guys since about 2019. Uh, you guys provide a lot of information. Uh, much that I. Here, sometimes don't get to the practicing portion of it or uh, have the discipline to keep up with it, uh, but really appreciate the info you guys put out. Um, you guys want me to just go straight into the question? Yeah, yeah do it. It's here, Josh. All right. So this was back towards the end of June, but uh, I had gone to the doctor because I had some issues with my shoulders. I was told last year that I had a bone spur in my right shoulder and both shoulders have felt like they were grinding or as if tendons muscles were hung up on the bone spur and pulled across it one by one. This happens more so on incline lifts and when using my arms laterally and over my head. Yesterday, the nurse practitioner at the orthopedic office looked at x-rays of both my shoulders and confirmed bone, sp bone spurs on each. Uh, he advised surgery isn't an option to file down those spurs. He further elaborated that my issue is a lack of cartilage between the arm bone and the socket due to arthritis. He stated I need to stop lifting heavy weight, but light weight at high volume would be okay. He did not elaborate as to what rep range he would recommend. Um, 
He did say that if my shoulders continue to worsen, I will need to have shoulder replacement. Needless to say, I was bummed by the news. Um, my question, though, is uh, I had a couple buddies that I've talked to about this, and a couple have mentioned some peptides. Uh, two in particular were the TB500 and the BPC157. Uh, I've looked at these two, and neither specifically mentions working on arthritis. I wanted to find out your thoughts on those. And then which programs would you recommend for higher rep ranges, and what range do you think I would be okay to do? Yeah. Well, Josh, um, you, have you heard the term, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail? <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you ask an orthopedic yeah. surgeon or somebody in that field uh, what the problem is, they're going to look at the joint. And they're going to say, oh, I could see why you hurt. Your joint looks the way it does. But the other question is why? Why do I have a bone spur? A bone spurs often come from osteoarthritis or joint degeneration. And that usually comes from poor movement patterns. So over years and years and years. Same thing with wearing down cartilage. So in other words, I could take away the bone spurs. I could give you brand new cartilage. And then over the course of the next however many years, it'll come back. It'll happen again because we haven't really solved... The real issue, which is you're moving in a way to cause these issues or cause these problems. You have movement patterns that are causing these issues. As far as peptides go, BPC and TB500, they can accelerate healing, but so what if you keep damaging the, the joint through poor movement patterns? It's like, um, you know, like I'm scraping my hand and getting a, a scar or, you know, getting a scab. And so now I'm going to heal faster. I'm still scraping the shit out of my hand. It's not going to, it'll help a little bit, but it's not going to solve the problem. The, the, the root cause is movement pattern issues. So we got to figure that out. Now, the best option for you would be to move to work, excuse me, work with a movement specialist, the correctional exercise specialist. Physical therapists can do this uh, quite well, but there's other movement specialists you could hire uh, that would work with you. Um, that would also do a pretty damn good job. Now, if that's not if that's out of the question for you, because they can be kind of expensive, I think the the you, mobility work and isometric exercises would be the, the place to start. Okay, mm -hmm. so you said overhead movement or overhead presses bother your shoulder? Correct. Okay. Can you hold a weight above your head and just hold it there? Does that hurt? No, holding it is fine. And the pain is very short term. It is just literally like while I'm moving through the stages of where my shoulder hmm is okay. kind of grinding or making that movement. So here's an idea, okay? And you could try this, but if I were to train you, what I would do is I'd have you press a weight above your head, pack your shoulder, so drop your shoulder down while keeping your elbow extended and holding that for 15 to 20 seconds and staying tense. That would be a set. Then the next set is I'd lower it by maybe two inches. Same thing, pack the shoulder, hold that for 10 to 15 seconds. That's another set. Another one would be a little lo lower. So essentially you're moving through the range of motion, but you're not moving through the range of motion in the rep. You're li literally holding certain positions. And the key is to get into the position to where it doesn't hurt, which mm -hmm. means you may have to drop the shoulder back. You may have to straighten out your spine. You may have to align your elbow. You may have to go lighter. But what this will do is strengthen uh, a better movement pattern. And then eventually you can move into the full range of motion. And I would combine that with yeah. mobility work. And, and to your earlier point of like finding a good physical therapist or somebody to take you through these movements, like and articulate your shoulder and ranges of motion that you learn uh, these ranges of motion. You learn these movement patterns specifically. So uh, you, you can find those, those areas where it's like, it's right up to the threshold, but now we stop and we kind of back off and then we squeeze and we tense our muscles and we try to make an isometric contraction happen there. So what we're trying to do is rebuild this feedback so your your body's like uh i i can stabilize uh in this position and in your your body's gonna be more comfortable and familiar uh in that range of motion so when we actually start to go loading it and, and pressing or or lifting weights um you know around your shoulders like it's gonna have that uh feedback that everything is supported and accounted for so the mobility piece to that uh, really like the more you can dive into that and, and even get help with that is going to be crucial 
Uh, but yeah, like isometrics are beautiful for any type of rehab. And then, you know, eventually I would, I would even recommend from there, you go through all that work. And then we get into like stuff like rubber bands where it's a little less, uh, impact, but it's, it's going to actually help to kind of build more strength and, uh, get more blood flow and things. And, and it brings a bit of a healing element to that. Yeah. I think this is, okay. this is a really tough one to help somebody virtually. Yeah. Um, and I think it is very, very well worth the investment in getting a physical therapist or movement specialist who is going to work through the movements. And even if you just did it for a short period of time, so they give you, you know, a, you know, collection of say five to 10 movements, like the one Sal was describing, uh, that you have in your arsenal for you to then go practice, but having a coach there, uh, or a specialist there who is going to be able to explain to you when you're in a certain place, like, oh, that bothers me. And they can go, oh, well, that's because you need to lift your chest up and pull your shoulder blades back down. And they can actually help you articulate uh, your body in the position that you need to be in through these movements. Doing that online without us kind of seeing you move, uh, I mean, I hope we can help. But I do think that I would save the money on the peptides. Yeah. I would save the yeah. money on things. Because here's the thing. Like, if you don't, and then it just goes the the surgery and the medication route and stuff like that, you're going to end up spending way more money way more. on that And they end up in the same place. Yeah, you know? you're going to be worse off. You're going to spend more money. And it's going to be this frustrating thing that you're battling. But investing in somebody to help you through this um, and, and practicing actually, beneficial movement patterns. That's yes. really where you need to go. Now, and, in the meantime, if you don't have Maps Prime Pro, I'll send that to you. And there's shoulder and shoulder blade mobility movements that you can practice on your own very carefully with good control, good tension. Don't just go through the movements, but do them in a controlled fashion as uh, they're demonstrated in the video. And in those videos, what's so Thank great? You. What's so great about Prime Pro is we actually have a, one of our favorite movement specialists, Doctor Brink, in there mm -hmm. coaching the three of us on how to move. So you get that kind of one-on-one -on -one feeling. So that I agree, this would be the yeah. the best virtual thing that we can do for you is at least give that to you. But I would still seek. And he's out in our forum a bunch too, so that would be somebody I would I would definitely reach out to, and he might know somebody in your area that he'd recommend. In so. fact, if you want to work with someone, he's he. Where are you located, uh, Josh? You're in Ohio, uh, North Central Ohio. Okay, so he's he's, he's the, Idaho. Yeah, he's Idaho, but he does work with people virtually. I've sent uh, some family members to him. So just get him in the forum. And he's excellent. If you go in our forum and ask for him, I mean, he he can help you, and then you could probably, uh, if you want to work with him privately, yeah, I would, he's one I, of the best. He's the best, I and mean, that's that's why we 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 developed the program with him. So well, that sounds good. I thank you guys for that. You got it, man. Yeah, we're going to send you over Prime Pro. We're also going to send you access to the forum, Josh. So make sure you get in there. And his name is Dr. Justin Brink. Yeah. That's the guy you want to you want to look for and tag. tag yep, yep. Tag him and then uh, I, ask questions, and then he'll take it from there. I do already have the forum. Um, oh, okay. If I may real quick, do you have like a specific rep range that you think that I would be – If should I continue to do my exercises – and the other programs that I have with you guys, or just do the Prime Pro for a while? You you need, I mean, as long as they don't hurt you, that's fine, but it sounds like you need to go correctional exercise 100%. Focus on that, okay. yeah, yeah, and see where, you know, what ability you have in terms of, like, what your ranges are, and I think, like, figuring out those parameters would be super helpful for then the regular exercises. Totally. To, give, to give you something to follow right now, so you're doing something on a regular basis until we get to brink or solve some of this stuff, go to the uh, mapsprimeprowebinar.com and follow the little 50-minute routine that I have in there. Like that'll give you something okay. to do oh, yeah, there you go. that you can like start right, like you can keep going on and you could do that's going to benefit you and help you right now. And then in the, in the meantime, you know, we'll, we'll get connected to Brink and start working on the shoulder specifically, but you're, but you're better off putting a lot of focus on that than, than potentially injuring yourself doing some of the other weight stuff. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. You got it, man. All All right, man. Josh. On in. Yeah. Good luck. All right. Take it easy. Yep. Yeah. The, the problem with the traditional methods is, is the doctor's like, Oh, we got a bone spur. Oh, no. yeah. And then they'll go and they'll I shave it saw off. It off. And then, you know, and then the guy's like, wow, I feel better, but, but the movement pattern has changed. Yeah. Or and worse, give you a shot. And well, you this feel is better, why right? you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, especially the knee surgeries, you end up like having to do the other knee. You know, yeah. It's just inevitable Yeah, uh, because the movement pattern was never addressed. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, this is one of those things, too, where I, it might seem expensive to hire someone like cheaper. A Dr. Brink's caliber, right? But, man, hiring someone like that for one or two months 
to see you two, three times a week until you get this like really down. It's actually going to be cheaper if you count. One hundred percent, it'll be way, way, way cheaper, and then you'll at least have the knowledge on okay, this is what I need to do if I want to address this myself versus trying to guess or going to these these surgeons that they, again that everything is a is a nail to them. Yeah, know? this reminds me of like a, so when I used to go to work with my dad. I remember there was this one job he went to, and the guy he gave the guy a quote. And the guy said, well, the other guy is going to do it for half the price. And my dad knew how they do it. And he goes, it's actually going to be more expensive for you because then you're going to call me to tear it down and I'm going to have to come reinstall it. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. Oh, yeah. Exactly. The guy put it in, you know, and it was all crappy or whatever. My dad went in, went in, had to tear it down and then do it again. The guy ended up spending more money. So yep. look, if you like the show, go to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. Get some help from Mind Pump with those free guides. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I am on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 